when we're looking at our thoughts, our behaviors, the way that our brain functions, what is controlling our brain more? Is it the microbes or is it actually neurons in our brain? Well, I submit and have some pretty good evidence in the book that it's the microbes. It's the passengers on the bus that are actually driving the bus. And we really ought to get over this. Mm -hmm. You know, bacteria have been around for three billion years. We've been around 100,000 thereabouts. And, you know, they probably have worked out some pretty good survival skills during three mm -hmm. billion years and probably want to direct our behavior to get them what they want. Now, unfortunately, bad guys can also direct our behavior to get mm. them what they want, right? Right. So, okay, so when we look at the gut microbiome, just to bring everybody into the conversation, we've got good guys, we've got bad guys. Do we have microbes that are neutral? Like, just give us an idea of what that ecosystem looks like before we dive into how it affects the brain. Sure. You know, I, I start the book with one of the one of the great scientific titan warfare of, in the 1800s between two French chemists, Louis Pasteur and Antoine Beauchamp. And they were both fighting, to, to put it mildly, over microbes and whether germs, bacteria in specific, were were bad guys like Pasteur got. And Beauchamp said, no, no, no. They're, all these organisms exist in what he called a terrain, an ecosystem. And I use a tropical rainforest as an example. And there are all these interdependent species. And they're neither good guys nor bad guys. Obviously, some things eat other things, et cetera, or need a product of one plant or animal to survive. But as long as things are in balance, this ecosystem, the terrain, keeps everything on a level playing field. But when imbalance happens, when one or more species becomes dominant, that's when you see a disease process, an infection. And Pasteur was a, a great public speaker, as I understand. And I've, I've read actually every book written about both of them. He figured out that French wine went bad by bacterial co contamination. And the French king thought that was pretty important information. And so <laughs> Pasteur won and Bachamp lost. But in several accounts, there's no proof, but in several accounts on Pasteur's deathbed, he called uh, Beauchamp's aide, Bernard, uh, to his bedside, and he said, you know, he was right. It is the terrain, some. Yeah. I, I've heard that story as well. You know, I researched that story during the pandemic. I was, I was like, when's the last time we've had a pandemic? And when I went back and looked at the 1918 Spanish flu, that was the time those two men were arguing and now we have more reference point to it because we've been through our own pandemic because what out of that pretty within a couple of years came penicillin. Yeah. And then once penicillin came into the world, it was like a miracle. And you can understand why. Think about how fearful we've all been. But, you know, to your point in the book, where do we sit now with bacteria now that we've created all of these antibiotics? Like, if anything is proven, is it the terrain or is it the microbes? I think it's the overuse of antibiotics. Would you agree? Yeah. And not not only that, but as I've talked about before and also in this book, people need to know that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, was mm -hmm. patented by Monsanto as an antibiotic, not as a weed killer. And we're now, luckily through animal studies particularly, we now know that glyphosate decimates our microbiome and, in fact, decimates the tryptophan serotonin-producing microbiome. And is, mm. it, is it any wonder that we've mm. got this incredible epidemic of depression and anxiety? I mean, you know, I mean, 20 to 30 percent of females in this country are on antidepressants. I mean, 
Yeah. It's, it's it's like holy it's cow. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is it affecting women more? The the is is a woman's gut more susceptible to things like glyphosate than a man's, leading us to depression? Well, I think you guys have always had a gut sense. And yeah, we do. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> no, no joke. I, you know, yeah. I have a wife and two daughters and some female dogs, so I get it. You know, I've been educated all my life. Well done. <laughs> but, and, 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 you know, autoimmune disorders affect women far more than men, although men are catching up. Because everybody's got an autoimmune disorder now, and that's, yeah. another, that's another story. But, yeah, women are more susceptible. And I, my theory and is that you guys, your immune system has to learn tolerance to the largest parasite ever created, and that's your fetus. And your immune system has to do kind of a 180 in trying to accept a clearly foreign body mm-hmm. of, for nine months or so without trying to kill it off and then go back to normal functioning. And I think that's this glitch that makes women in particular more susceptible to autoimmune diseases. And and I happen to think, like Hippocrates said 2,500 years ago, that all disease begins in the gut. And certainly in my practice, which is 80, 80% autoimmune patients, mm-hmm. every autoimmune patient has gut dysbiosis and abnormal terrain. Every autoimmune patient has leaky gut, intestinal permeability. Everyone, 100%. Wow. 